2016, I was working at a summer camp in Estes Park, Colorado, and I was housed in a cabin full of dudes that weren't particularly fond of picking up after themselves. Awesome dudes, but uh, would also stay up way too late past my bedtime several nights a week. Knowing that I could get better sleep in my Ford Escape, I started parking it in this little place in the woods that Jared and I called the Commune, where he would park his van and I would park my Ford Escape and we would go to sleep there. Now Jared, as I stated, had a van at the time with a bed built out, so plenty of space for him to sleep there. I would move anything I had in the back of my Ford Escape into the front seats, the, the passenger or the co-pilot in the pilot seat, and lay the back seats flat, creating a bed. That's where I would sleep. I eventually got tired of moving my gear day after day, morning after morning, night after night, from the back to the front, to then the front, then the back, and back and forth. I just wanted a fixed setup in the Ford Escape that I could sleep in, you know, ready to go at any time I wanted, but still be able to store stuff in. So with the help of a few knowledgeable friends, a few scraps of wood, and bits and pieces from the hardware store, I ended up building a platform raised bed in the Ford Escape that would allow me to store things under it, as well as sleep whenever I wanted to. The bed was always made, ready to go. Now I didn't build this bed in the Ford Escape to live out of the Ford Escape full time. It was more so just a place that was comfortable to sleep in and would allow me to get to further places uh, with the comforts of home, like having a bed. Over the years, this bed and this setup has seen plenty of use, cross country trips, trips to Utah from Colorado, um, and just general car camping. It's super easy to take, take stuff on top if you need extra gear, take it off, sleep there for the night, and then keep moving. Through all of this, I found out that having a bed in your car makes traveling and going places a lot more appealing because it's a lot easier to do. You don't have to find a hotel, motel, hostel, campground, whatever. You just have to find a place that you can park overnight and you can stay there for the night. It's super enjoyable, less time consuming as far as planning pre-trip where you're gonna stop and sleep. You can just kind of go with the flow, stop where you're at or somewhere close to where you're at and then wake up the next day and keep going. So why am I even talking about this? Well, because we upgraded. Uh, coming at the barbershop too lit. Pocket full of nickels blowing super drove. Uh, smoother than the Cadillac with cruise control. Doing what I do, you know. Women playing hard to get as I pull up on the... If you couldn't tell, I'm in the back of our new van. Jordan and I just bought a van here in Colorado. We decided to buy it here in Colorado instead of Wisconsin due to all the salt on the roads in the Midwest. We didn't want one with rust on the bottom. And uh, we ended up with this 2019 Ford Transit. The real question is why am I even sharing this on a channel that's about cycling? One, I like documenting the process of almost everything I do. I find that enjoyable and if I can offer little bits and pieces of help to other people along the way then it's a win-win. Second answer to that question is this build will without a doubt take up a lot of time. Now that time is time that I could have spent mountain biking, riding gravel and subsequently filming those things, editing the videos and posting them to YouTube. Documenting the process of this build is important to me as it's gonna get us places where we can ride our bikes, where we can mountain bike, where we can ride gravel that's not near our neck of the woods. So I know some of you might be thinking, well, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't subscribe to this channel because of these van builds or anything like that. I subscribed because I like the cycling content and that's totally fair. The cycling content is definitely still gonna be there. This is my solution to this type of content. Every video containing a van build process, whatever it may be, will have a V, B, I can't make an S with my hand, but an S for van build series. You will know that that video has to do with the van 
So if you could care less about the van builds or van build videos on YouTube, I know there's millions out there, then uh, just feel free to skip those videos. While these videos will have titles like Episode 1, Episode 2 of the VBS, there will still be a lot of cycling content in between videos. It's not just going to turn into a van build channel, but there's definitely going to be some documentation of this process, especially when it comes to the parts that are related to cycling in this van. If on the other hand you are interested to see how this build turns out, then uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Welcome to the channel. I hope you like cycling because there's definitely going to be cycling content in between van build videos. But yes, welcome. I also just want to say thank you guys for your support this year. It's been awesome. I've had a lot of fun making cycling videos and cycling content and excited to see what the new year will bring. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Till then, remember to stay stoked on spokes.